Hi everyone, welcome to Veronica Hack. Today I'll show you how you can crochet a really pretty bowl. So you see here a lovely circular base as well as the rest of it. It has a great structure, a great texture, and you see the lovely edge here on top. So this is going to be relatively simple, so feel free to stay tuned and see how you can do it. So you will need a spool of your Wooly Hugs rope. So we have here 200 grams per each spool and 140 meters of length. And this will be enough for the entire bowl in the size I'm doing. I will be using a 5 millimeter crocheting needle and that's pretty much all we need. So first off, we need to secure the very tip of our yarn. So by doing that, it won't fray later. It's really easy to do. For that, I will use a regular lighter and I'll just hold it close to the end, but I don't want to actually set it on fire. So be really careful with this. You just want to warm the very tips of it. Um, you warm it up a little bit and that kind of melts it and secures the rest of the yarn from fraying. So that's all we are looking for. So let's now start with a little ring. You probably already know how to do this. So take your needle and take the thread through. And we can fix it with a chain. And now into our ring we do seven singles. Pull the end thread lightly, not all the way. And go into the first stitch, but not into the two loops where we usually go through. This time we're going through the V section that we have thanks to the single. And once again into the following loop. Into the next V of the next stitch we go through and again into the following loop. Same with the next stitch. That was three, let's keep doing that. So once into the V and once through the stitch as always. So like this. It's a bit tricky in the first round, but that's why you don't pull the thread as tightly as you usually would. It just makes it a bit simpler that way. Okay, I have seven total and I'm at the end of my round. So now I'll pull the beginning thread tight and I'll put a contrasting thread as a marker so that I know where my beginning is. Now I can work directly into the V and then with the next stitch I again go through the V. And we do an addition here. I will repeat this for a total of six times. 
So two times into the V. It's gonna be a bit harder to do with the added stitch. And one into the loop. And then you just repeat. Through the loop and start again two times into the V once through the loop. And again. I messed up here, let me fix it. And again. And the addition through the loop, and now one last time, two times the V, once the loop. You have the beginning round with seven singles, then seven times two stitches, one into the V and then one into the loop. And now seven times two stitches into the V and one into the loop. And now comes row four and I'll mark that so that you always know where we are at if you need to rewind the video. So we want to do the bottom that should look like this. So it definitely pays off when you do the tricky V stitch because it not only looks extremely pretty and neat, it is also very tight and very stable. So let's mark our beginning again and we can now go into the V three times. There we go, and once into the loop, and then again three times through the V. and once through the loop. And you finish the entire round in the same manner until you reach your marked spot again. So I'm just before the end of the fourth spiral and I need to go just three more times into the V. and the added stitch. Now we mark this again and I'll mark the beginning of the fifth row. So here I didn't change where the additions were, so that's where our shape um, comes from, this particular shape. But here I'll try to do it the other way around. So let me show you, two times into the V, Then 
then into the loop, so the addition. Then four times into the V. So I'm basically skipping the spot where I added last time. Four, and now we have the addition, and then again four. Three. And four, and now the addition. So always four stitches into the V and then an additional stitch. So I'm shortly before the spiral, so the fifth one. So I did the four Vs and now I need the addition. And then I'll end with two times into the V. So remember, we started with two before the first addition and now we are basically ending that beginning. Now I'm marking it again, row 6 is starting. Now we will do 5 times the V and then an addition. So this is the addition of the last spiral. Those are always a little bit more difficult to do. Five and the addition. And then again five. four and five and you keep going like this until you finish your entire spiral okay so now i'm finishing this round so one more addition to go five and the last addition and now i'll mark this spot again and we're doing the last round of the bottom area i'm going through the v three times so that we can move the addition And then six times into the bees. Three. And keep going this way. So six Vs and one addition afterwards. And when you finish with three Vs after the last addition, you know you're done. So the seventh spiral is almost done. I'm doing my last addition and three stitches afterwards. And you see now that we don't have any edges or pointy sections sticking out and that's because we moved our additions as we did them. 
So now we can do one round with slip stitches. So I'm just going through and pulling all the way through. I started with seven singles, if you remember, and I always added seven singles or seven stitches at a time. So seven stitches times seven spirals makes a total of 49 slip stitches in this final ending row or spiral. So here is my spiral now after the slip stitches. Here is my first slip stitch, so I need one more to be done. And then I can take the needle out and I can go through here from the back into the first slip stitch and just pull the loose loop through, so basically to the back. And when we do that, we can do the first chain. This is the bottom, so we are starting our side and we have one chain and we will do 14 more. Seven. 13 and 14 and one more then and the 14 we will do with singles so a total of 14 singles seven Thirteen and fourteen. The first chain we do with a slip stitch. And now we can go here into the first stitch. So here we did all of them with slip stitches. The doubled stitch or appears to be doubled we do with a slip stitch this way then we do a chain and we turn and here the slip stitch we will do with another slip stitch and the following 14 get again a single each Six and seven. Twelve, thirteen. Fourteen. Again, turn with a chain. And again, just into the back section, we do 14 singles. So from here on, always into the back section of each existing stitch. Nine.
11, 12, 13, and 14. Then a slip stitch and now the following stitch again with a slip stitch. Then we turn with a chain. Here into this loop. So the slip stitch we will again do with a slip stitch. And then again 14 singles into the back sections. Seven, ten, and fourteen, and again turn with a regular chain, and again do the back sections of each stitch with a regular single crochet. I have a little twist going on, let me fix that. Seven. Thirteen and fourteen, and the fifteenth is again a slip stitch around the following stitch of the bottom. We again do a slip stitch, and then we turn with a chain. Here, this loop. So you see here the slip stitch of the bottom. So this stitch we again do with a slip stitch and the following 14 we do again with a single each and feel free to count them because then you can always check if you went through the right spot on the bottom. Chain and turn and 14 stitches back. And always make sure to go into the back section of each existing stitch. That way you ensure the bowl can stretch a bit when it's done. Okay, sorry, I forgot to count this time. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Okay, we did good. Then we do a slip stitch, another one into the next one, turn with a chain. Again, start with a slip stitch into the first stitch. And then we again do 14 singles back. And now, as you can see, you already know how to continue. So it doesn't get any news from here. It's all the same. And you do this until you finish all of the edge stitches from your entire bottom section. So you will get a nice bowl shape and we will close the edge up in the end. So I'll meet you there.
So here is my bowl and you see the vertical rows there in the back 49 times. So the bottom here is completely done. And now I'm finishing my last row. Here on the outside, you can count the ribs that are sticking out. And if you have 49, you know that all of your stitches are done properly. Okay, here is our last slip stitch and the one in the bottom, just like so far. And now you can connect the beginning and end. So here you take the chain section and on the other side the back section where you would actually usually do the slip stitch and you just pull through. I'll do it a couple of times so that you can follow as well, but as you can see it's actually super easy to do. And then this is what you get. Anyway, I'll finish this and I'll get to the upper edge to show you how to do that. Last stitch here. And my bowl is done, the shape is finished, but I do want an upper edge here so that we can have a nice and stable edge here. So of course you could use it this way already, this is up to you, whatever you prefer visually. So I'm just showing you an optional last. So here I'm doing a chain for the height and then all over you see the little ribs, the horizontal lines, and then we will do a single crochet both left and right from each line. So here the right I already did, and then I have the left to do. Another one here, so on the right side and afterwards on the left. Here again. So on the right side and then on the left. Here you see the lines or the ribs forming, so that's what you're looking for. So you see the effect and we will do this all around now. I'm almost done. Here these two belong together so that's where I'll go through both sides.
and now I can close it up to a round. And then you can again go up with a slip stitch and do a round in just singles, again into the back section of each existing stitch. I'm almost done with this. I have just a couple left. I'm taking my needle out, going from the back into the first stitch, and I take the loop through the back. Then I come from the back through the loop and I turn the whole piece. So my loop should be on the inside now and I can just do the top section, the top stitches, with a round of just regular slip stitches. So just around the whole thing with slip stitches and this is the effect that you kind of get. I'm almost done with this round. So you see the lovely edge on top, I have just a little bit left and now I can keep working the edge. That's up to you and your preference is how you want to do it. But when you have too little left, it would be smart to stop, you shouldn't start a new spool just to do another row. But in my case, I do have enough left for another row, so I'll probably just start with another round. So for that, I'm pulling out the last stitch. And this one I'll again transfer to the inside. Here through the bottom and again through. And here on the bottom, I'll do one more row of slip stitches. But this is just a little decorative piece so that it doesn't um, yield any leftovers. But you don't have to do this if you don't want to. So the last couple of rows are optional, if you don't want to do them, you don't have to. I'll just finish this row and then I'll be done. So here we are, almost completely done. Before the last one, I again want to have it on the other side, just like we did before. Then cut the thread off and pull through. And then weave in. So we are now done and I think this looks really nice so you can kind of see what we have. You can see the structure or the texture all around I think it's really nice to look at for pretty much every angle. 
Um, so yeah, the bottom we started with is here. It has a lovely shape due to the extra slip stitches we did here. Um, yeah, I just really like the way it looks. Um, here on top, it also looks really cool. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you would do it differently or exactly the same, how well it turned out for you as well. The comment section is as always below. So we needed exactly one spool for this. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to shoot a thumbs up if you did. You can also subscribe to my channel and that way stay updated with all of our new videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.